Hi, today we're going to upgrade our Neptune 4 Max printers to the latest version of Clipper. The Neptune 4 Max is a great printer, but there is a small problem. While Elegoo has released a number of firmware updates, each fixing bugs, improving performance, and introducing new features, they are all built on the same old and outdated version of Clipper from mid-2022. As a result, if you want to use any of the new features introduced to Clipper in the past year or two, including axis twist compensation or Z-thermal adjust, you're out of luck. Also, a lot of popular 3D printer mods, including Big Tree Tech's Eddy Probe or Coprint's new KCM multi-filament solution, are only compatible with very recent versions of Clipper. That's why I reverse engineered the changes to Clipper in the Neptune 4 Max's 1.2.3.2 firmware and reproduced them in the latest version of Clipper. The result? A modern version of Clipper that is compatible with the LCD controller and other Elegoo specific functionality. In the rest of this video, we're going to walk through the steps to upgrade to this new version of Clipper. Upgrading your printer is fairly easy and it doesn't make any permanent modifications to your printer. You'll be able to switch back and forth from the stock firmware version to this new version in about a minute or two. However, to start the process, your printer will need to be on stock firmware version 1.2.3.2 and we'll be using SSH to remote into the printer. If you haven't used SSH before, you might want to take a look at our previous video where we cover it in depth. Also, I created a web page that will list all the directions we're following today, and this will be kept up to date in case any of the steps change or any bugs and issues are found. To begin, we're going to need to open a terminal. I'm going to be using Windows Terminal in Git Bash, but the directions are identical if you're using the Windows command prompt. Since nearly all of the commands that we're going to be following today are going to be run on the printer, we'll be using SSH to remote in. If you haven't used SSH before, you can start by typing SSH and then the username for the printer. For the Neptune 4 Max, that's MKS. And then you'd use the at symbol and then the IP address for the printer. For my printer, it's 10.0.0.21. Then if you hit enter, it'll prompt you for the password. For the Neptune 4 Max, the default password is MakerBase. However, if you followed the steps in our previous video, you can instead use whatever alias you created. I've created Neptune 4 Max. Hit enter and you've remoted directly into the printer. The stock Elegoo firmware is configured to start a number of services at boot time. And three of these need to be stopped before upgrading to the new version of Clipper. These services should also probably be stopped each time you want to switch between firmware versions. We're going to start by using the system control utility to stop the Clipper service. This utility requires root permissions, so we're going to use sudo to run the command as if we're the root user. And the name of the utility is system control, and we're going to be using the stop subcommand to stop the service. The name of the service in this case is Clipper. And then we're asked for a password. If you haven't changed it, the default password for the Neptune 4 Max is MakerBase. And now Clipper service has been stopped. We now need to stop the Clipper MCU service and the MakerBase client service. Whenever you make changes to your printer, or any computer for that matter, it's always a good idea to create backups. Since the Clipper upgrade process needs to replace certain important directories and files, we're going to rename them so we always have the option of reverting back to stock firmware if we need to. Let's rename the Clipper directory. This is where the core Clipper functionality resides. To prevent getting confused later, we'll append a .stock.v1.2.3.2 to the ends of the file and directory names. In Linux, to rename a file, we can use the mv or move command and type the name of the file to be renamed, and then the name we want to rename to. And we can double check that we renamed it correctly using ls or list. Now we need to rename Clipper's Linux microcontroller firmware. 
This file is for the virtual microcontroller that's used to connect to your printer's accelerometers. Since this file is owned by root, we need to use sudo. And we're going to use the mv command again. And the file we need to rename is in user local bin. And the name of the file is clipper underscore mcu. And we're going to rename it, but keep it in the same folder. And we hit enter. And now let's use an ls to make sure that it got renamed correctly. And we can see the file now has the correct name. We now need to make a few small changes to the printer.config file. These changes are needed because the max Excel to decel feature in Clipper has recently been deprecated. And if we don't remove references to the field, you'll end up with warnings each time Clipper starts. To begin, we're going to create a backup of the printer.config file. But unlike the previous backup steps, we're going to use cp or the copy command to create a copy of the file instead of just renaming it. Now let's open the file using the nano text editor. Now let's scroll down to the printer section. And we're going to comment out the max Excel to D cell field. To comment it out, we simply put a hash in front of it. Next, scroll down to the G code macro print end section. Ignore the red color. That just indicates tabs instead of spaces. We need to comment out or remove this line here that has a set run decal in it. We also need to remove or comment out the last portion of the next line, which has Excel to decel in it. With that done, scroll down to the G code macro cancel print section and comment out or remove the line that has a set run decel in it and comment out or remove the last part of the next line that has Excel to decel in it. We can now use control X to save the file and press Y to confirm we want to save the changes and then press enter because we don't want to change the file name. We now need to get the new version of Clipper onto the printer. It lives in a fork of the official Clipper Git repository at github.com slash snmakers slash clipper in a branch named snmakers dash elegu neptune 4 max dash v1.2.3.2. I'll do my best to keep this branch up to date with the latest official version of Clipper. While elegu is never officially released the source code for the Neptune 4 Max, I as accurately as possible recreated the version of Clipper in firmware version v1.2.3.2 and you can find that in the git tag stock elegu neptune underscore 4 underscore max v1.2.3.2. To start, we need to clone the git repository. So we're going to use the git utility and the clone command. And now we need to enter the full URL of the repository. Git normally creates a directory with the same name as the repository. But to prevent confusion, we're going to change that to clipper.snmmakers. While the Clipper directory can technically have any name and be located almost anywhere on the printer, a stock Neptune 4 Max is configured for the Clipper directory to be named Clipper and to be located in the MKS user's home directory. Since we named the directory clipper.snmmakers, we need to create a symlink. To do this, we use the ln or link command with the dash s option to make it a symbolic link. And then we type the name of the existing directory and then the name of the new symlink to be created. A symlink is basically an alias or a second name for a file or directory. It's easiest to understand if we list out all of the directories with Clipper in the name. We have our stock Clipper directory and the directory we just created with Git. At the bottom of the list, we see our symlink, Clipper, which points to clipper.snmmakers. This allows programs and applications running on the printer 
to continue to use the name Clipper, but we can safely have unambiguous names for our actual directories. While Git should have automatically checked out the correct branch when we clone the repository, let's explicitly check it out ourselves just to be safe. Use cd or the change directory command and then Clipper to navigate into the Clipper directory. And then use git the checkout command and the name of the branch. We can see from the output we happen to have already been on the correct branch. While Clipper has primarily been developed in Python, an interpreted programming language that doesn't need to be compiled, the microcontroller firmware and a small helper library named C Helper were both developed in C, a programming language that does require compilation. Let's now build that C Helper library. But if you've restarted your printer since beginning the steps in this video, make sure the three services mentioned at the beginning of the video are still stopped because otherwise they can cause complications for the next few steps. The MakerBase client service is particularly problematic because it tries to copy an incompatible C helper library binary into the Clipper directory. So let's make sure that file doesn't already exist by using sudo and then rm or the remove command with the dash f option so we don't get a warning if the file doesn't already exist and then the path to the file. And we build the library with the following command. We can verify the binary built correctly by using ls-la in the path to the binary. And making sure the user and group are both MKS. If they are root, you'll need to make sure the MakerBase client service is stopped, delete the binary, and try again. The last step for switching to the new version of Clipper is to update the microcontroller firmware. The Neptune 4 Max was designed with two microcontrollers. The first is a real STM32F402RCT6, and the second is a virtual microcontroller that runs directly on the printer's internal computer and primarily communicates with the printer's accelerometers. While the steps for updating the real STM32 microcontroller are available on the companion webpage, we're not going to follow those today. Normally, when you update Clipper, you also want to update the microcontroller firmware. However, one of the goals while creating this new Clipper version was to make it as easy as possible to switch back and forth from the stock version to this new version. And while there are multiple known ways of updating the firmware on the microcontroller, they all require at least partially disassembling your printer. Luckily though, the stock firmware version appears to be compatible with our new version of Clipper, so we can skip updating it. If a non-printer disassembly version is found, I'll create a follow-up video. We do, however, need to update the virtual microcontroller. And to do that, we do a make clean to make sure there are no stale or out-of-date files in the Clipper directory. And then we do a make menu config to launch the configuration utility. Navigate down to the microcontroller architecture field and press enter. And then select Linux process. Press escape to save and exit, and Y to confirm. Now use make to build the firmware. We now need to rename and move the generated binary. We are using sudo because the destination location is owned by root. The last step is to create a symlink for the firmware binary, and we again need to use sudo since the directory is owned by root. We can use ls-la to verify the symlink was created correctly. We are now finished installing the new version of Clipper. While you could just restart the services, it's easier and safer to just reboot the printer.
The new version of Clipper should now be installed on the printer, and if everything worked correctly, we shouldn't see any functional differences. However, we can verify the printer is using the new version of Clipper in Fluid or Mainsail. Open a browser and navigate to Fluid. And scroll down to the console window and issue command M115. It'll report back the firmware version and you should see version 12. You can also go to the system tab, scroll down, and in the MCU RPI information, which is the virtual Linux microcontroller, we should also see version 12. So we know that we are using the new version of Clipper. While the printer should continue to behave the same as with stock firmware, the benefits of this new version of Clipper come from increased compatibility with third-party hardware upgrades and also the ability to use new Clipper features like access twist compensation. There is currently one minor issue with this version of Clipper that I'm still working on, however. After using the LCD controller to perform an auto bed leveling and then clicking on the save button, there is a small chance the printer won't restart properly. The mesh will correctly be saved to the printer.config file, but as the printer is booting, there'll be an error message related to the microcontroller. While I wasn't able to recreate this error for this video, you can use the firmware restart command in the fluid or mainsail console or just restart the printer. Well, your Neptune 4 Max should now be on the latest version of Clipper and be ready for any future mods you want to throw at it. However, if you've encountered any issues or have any questions, let us know in the comments below and we'll do our best to help you out. And as always, thanks for watching.